This is your USMNT Abroad Weekend Update from November 3rd to November 5th of 2023. Hi, can you hear me, Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to the US Men's National Team Abroad Series, where every single Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend. Now, two things before we start this episode. The first one being we need to hit 10,000 followers on Instagram before the end of this week because I made a bet. There's a lot of money involved in this bet. And if I lose, I just won't really actually have the money to pay the bet. So if you want to help me avoid bankruptcy, um, you know, know, just just help help me me win win this this one. one. All you have to do is follow me on Instagram, Tactical Manager TV. It's free and you can unfollow later on. But just right now, help a brother out. We also have the U.S. Men's National Team roster being released this week. So we'll be doing a live stream for that. We'll be covering that as always. And we will have a special announcement for the United States versus Trinidad match at Austin next week. But more on that later. Okay, now as I always say, drop a like if you want to to support the channel and help this episode. Let's play the intro and let's start with the updates. As always, we start with the top leagues in Europe, and the first one will be the English Premier League. So let's go to England and talk about Matt Turner from Nottingham Forest. On Sunday, Matt Turner was benched at Nottingham Forest. He hasn't really been bad for them at all this season, but he has also made some pretty bad mistakes here and there, the most notable one being last weekend. So it kind of makes sense that he was benched to a certain extent. All we can do right now is hope he gets another opportunity and can bounce back because honestly being at the bench at Nottingham Forest is actually worse than being the backup at Arsenal. So right now he's in a worse situation than he was last season, which sucks. But moving on, let's talk about Chris Richards, our center back from Crystal Palace and Luca Coleosho, the dual national Italian American that plays for Burnley because they clashed over the weekend. On Saturday, Coleosho started and played 78 minutes for Burnley during their 2-0 loss to Crystal Palace. So Burnley ain't really good, but Coleosho is gaining some valuable experience and he's looked dangerous in multiple occasions when they're playing. There is potential there, but he also isn't quite at the English Premier League level yet, in my humble opinion. As for Chris Richards, he was subbed in for Crystal Palace at the 86 minute to help them hold the 2-0 lead. Again, Coleosho has a lot of potential, but to me, he hasn't quite looked like a Premier League level player. He looks like a potential Premier League level player. But moving on from that, let's go to Austin Trusty from Sheffield United. On Saturday, Trusty started and played the full 90 minutes for Sheffield United, helping them gain their first English Premier League win of the season with a 2-1 victory over Wolves. The win came after a penalty kick in added time, but it doesn't really matter. A win is a win, and they most certainly needed a win. I wasn't able to watch this match, just the highlights, but sources that I trust have told me that Trusty had a very good game. They actually told me that Trusty was their best defender. So congratulations to Trusty and congratulations to Sheffield for finally winning a freaking game this season in the Premier League. Moving on from that, let's go to the Fulham boys, A-Rob and Tim Ream. Saturday, Ream and Robinson both started and played the full 90 minutes for Fulham during their 1-0 loss to Manchester United. A-Rob and Ream did well in this match. They were very close to holding a 0-0 draw, but Bruno Fernandes was able to score at added time. And honestly... I would even say Fulham sort of deserved a 1-0 win over Manchester United, but you know, what matters is who scores, and United got the one goal and Fulham got no goals. So if you know basic mathematics, Manchester United scored one, Fulham scored none, so 1-0 Manchester United, they lost. But overall, good game from Tim Ream and good game from A-Rob. They were not at fault at the Bruno Fernandes goal. Now let's leave England because they have terrible food and go to a country that has wonderful food. That is Italy. So let's talk about the Americans that play in the Serie A. And we'll start with the players from AC Milan, which are Christian Pulisic and Yunus Musa. On Saturday, Musa started and played 81 minutes for Milan during their 1-0 loss to Udinese. An awful loss against an opponent that is at the bottom of the table while playing at home. And Pulisic wasn't available. And in my personal non-biased humble opinion, If Pulisic was available, this most certainly would not 
have happened. But listen, we have good news in regards to Pulisic's injury. Apparently, he was not available against Udinese just due to precaution. And Pioli has said that he will be back with Milan this Tuesday as they face PSG in the Champions League. A must win for Milan, by the way. A loss means they're pretty much out of the Champions League. They would just be fighting for an Europa League spot at best. And obviously, if Pulisic is good to go for Tuesday, the good news for U.S. men's national team fans is that he will probably be available for the United States later this month in the match that will face Trinidad and Tobago for a spot in the 2024 Copa America. Still in Italy, we have the boys that play for Juventus, and they are Wesson McKinney and Tim Weah. Obviously, Tim Weah is injured. He won't be back till later this month. He won't even be in the U.S. men's national team camp. But McKinney played. And on Sunday, Weston McKinney started and played the full 90 minutes for Juventus during their 1-0 win over Fiorentina. And come on, I didn't watch the game. I ain't spending my Sunday afternoon watching Allegri Ball. I don't know how Weston did. I watched parts of the game and he was playing as a right wing back. But Allegri is a soccer terrorist. And as an American, I do not support that. Even though I've watched a lot of Juventus games in the past like season or two with Weston there now with Weah, but you get the point. But I will say this, as painful as it is to watch Allegri Ball, he is in second place. He's getting the results and the job done. Still, it's borderline unwatchable at this point. I'm, I'm sorry if you're a Juventus fan. The results have been fine this season, right? They're getting wins, but it's just so painful to watch. But that's enough for Italy. Let's go to Germany, to the Bundesliga. So why don't we start with Giovanni Reina from Borussia Dortmund. On Saturday, Dortmund took a fat 4-0 loss to Bayern in the Bundesliga and Gio Reina sat on the bench the full 90 minutes. I seriously hate Terzic. Like a lot. Almost as much as I hate the small world ride at Disney World. And I also do hate that ride a lot. For starters, he has absolutely no idea of how to develop a player and doesn't really understand the importance of giving a player consistent minutes to gain form and confidence. Giovanni Reina was literally coming from a fantastic performance during the midweek, then he gets zero minutes over the weekend. I also hate that Terzic is ruining my Harry Kane agenda. Like, I really wanted Bayern to go trophyless this season with Tottenham possibly winning something. But it looks like Bayern will probably win the Bundesliga unless Bayer Leverkusen can do something about it, which they probably won't. Dortmund won't either. Neither will Leipzig. So Bayern will win the trophy. And again, Tottenham probably won't win the Premier League. So my agenda will be ruined. And I usually don't like it when people ruin my agenda. But moving on, because this video ain't about me, let's talk about the Aronson brothers, Brendan Aronson from Union Berlin and Paxton Aronson from Eintracht Frankfurt, because they clashed, sorta, kinda, over the weekend. On Saturday, we had what the media was essentially calling the Aronson Derby, and it was disappointing. Eintracht Frankfurt handed Union Berlin another loss, which I think that's 12 in a row for Union Berlin at this point. They've been pretty bad. The Aronson brothers combined for roughly 11 minutes, and they were subbed in when the game was essentially over three, with a 3-0 lead for Eintracht Frankfurt. On the bright side, it is pretty cool to see two American brothers getting minutes at the same Bundesliga match. So to me, that's a big win for American soccer, regardless of the minutes being kind of like useless and not really meaningful it's still pretty cool but moving on let's go to john brooks from hoffenheim on saturday john brooks stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for hoffenheim during their 3-2 loss to leverkusen was he actually benched was it just rotation i'm not sure we'll see what happens to him next week i i personally think it's just rotation because he literally played for them during the midweek so we'll see about brooks but who knows maybe pellegrino materazzo benched the american moving on we have joe scally and pfock that play for borussia not dortmund you know, the other Borussia team, the, the Munchen Gladbach one. On Saturday, Joe Scali and Pifak both started for Gladbach during their 3-3 draw with Freiburg. So Scali played a full match, the full 90 minutes, while Pifak was subbed out a little bit before halftime due to a muscle injury, and he will miss some time, which is unfortunate because Pifak was having one heck of a match. He scored a goal. He was also able to draw a penalty kick for Gladbach. In one of their goals, his diagonal run was what created space for the goal scoring opportunity to be created and converted. So Pifak was essentially involved in every single goal in one way, shape or form. This also comes after he scored a brace during the midweek. 
It's just unfortunate that he got injured literally when he was picking up good form. Next up is Kevin Paredes from Wolfsburg. And this one is a good report because he did well. On Sunday, Paredes started for the second Bundesliga match in a row for Wolfsburg during their 2-2 draw with Werder Bremen. Paredes scored a goal. He looked sharp and was subbed out around the 84th minute. And yes, you heard that right. He played well and he scored a goal. Now, here's the thing. He is at a younger age than Brendan Aronson and playing better or looking better in the same league, in the Bundesliga. I do see one issue with both of these players. They're on the floor way too much. That goes for Brendan and for Kevin Paredes. But I think Paredes has done better than Brendan, while Brendan Aronson has struggled all season long in the Bundesliga. So here's what I have to say. With Timothy Weah out of this U.S. men's national team camp that's coming up, Paredes is pretty much a roster lock this month and probably Brendan Aronson as well. Here's my question to you. Is Kevin Paredes ahead of Brendan Aronson on the U.S. men's national team winger depth chart? In my opinion, at the moment, yes, he is. But look at it this way. It's probably closer than some might think. The thing is, Paredes offers more on the ball. He seems to be far more technical and just a better player, while Brendan Aronson hustles more. So it really depends on what you prefer. I prefer technical players, so Brendan Aronson would not be ahead. But for Greg Berhalter, Brendan Aronson is probably ahead of Kevin Paredes. But you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Not that anything we think matters. Berhalter probably still has Brendan Aronson ahead of Kevin Paredes and Aronson probably will start this camp with Timothy Weah being out and Pulisic maybe not being 100% fit. But let's move on from that and let's go to Leonard Maloney from Heindheim. Heindenheim. I I'm trying. I'm going to get this name right at some point. On Sunday, Maloney started and played the full 90 minutes for Heidenheim during their 2-0 win over Stuttgart. Okay, we're done with Germany. Now let's go to Spain, but the update on Spain is not good and it's super quick. Luca De La Torre was not available for Celta de Vigo over the weekend. He felt a muscle discomfort, so he wasn't available for Celta de Vigo. Now, for how long will he be out? There were no reports on that. It could be one week. It could be one game. It could be a month. We don't know. I'll update you guys on the USMNT abroad next Monday. So let's go to France and talk about floating Balogun from Monaco. On Sunday, Balogun started and played 81 minutes for Monaco during their 2-0 win over Brest in the Bundesliga. So Balogun didn't really have a good match. He wasn't awful. He was just meh. I know that's a weird analysis. What the heck is meh? I also don't really know how to explain it. It's just that when I thought about a word to describe Balogun's performance, the first thing that came to my head was just meh. Let's just say he's done better, but he has also done worse. So that's what meh means. He did also score a goal, but it was disallowed. I guess it's worth mentioning, even though it didn't really count. So I don't think it really matters because he was off sides. What matters here is that he continues to start for Monaco. They continue to win. They got the win, the 2-0 win. And I want them to qualify to the Champions League this season so that Balogun can get that experience next season. And again, Balogun is not inconsistent by any means, but he's going to have bad games. He's going to have good games. He's still a young player, right? Last season was technically his first breakout season as a young athlete. So we're going to go with that, but not a good weekend for Balogun. It's actually the second weekend that he doesn't have a good performance. Okay, we're done with the top leagues. Now we're going to go to the Eredivisie or to the Netherlands and talk about the Americans that play there. So why don't we start with the Americans that play for PSV? And they are Ricardo Pepe, Serginho Dest, and Malik Tillman. On Saturday, Sergino Des started for PSV and played 60 minutes during their 6-0 win over Heracles. Malik Tillman came off the bench at the 54th minute and Ricardo Pepe was subbed in around the 60th minute. At the time when they came in, the match was still only 2-0 for PSV, but they were playing man up. However, Tillman and Pepe shined and helped PSV expand their lead into a blowout. Tillman by scoring one of the goals with a very nice finish off a low cross and Ricardo Pepe got a great assist and then he scored a somewhat easy goal to close the 6-0 victory. I do want to add some context here to a few things and Malik Tillman was actually benched because of his poor performance last week against Ajax. We covered it here at the channel, their manager was not happy, but just like the oversleeping incident he had earlier this season, he bounced back by coming off the bench and scoring and having a good performance. I will say one thing though, the Eredivisie, if you play for the top three or four teams in that league, it's probably the best league in Europe among the top leagues to stat pad. No, seriously, there's some crazy stat padding happening in this league if you play for the top clubs. And understand, this is not downplaying any player's accomplishment. Pepe is very talented, but a lot of his stats were mostly during stat 
padding moments where the match is essentially done. The opponent is dead beat and not really fighting for anything anymore. He comes off the bench, gets an assist, gets a goal. Again, credit to him, but I just want to add context because I don't want to be biased. And also, that's one of the reasons why Santi Jimenez is scoring so much. The Eredivisie is a good league. But defensively, it ain't that great. And in certain moments of games, it's very easy to stat pad when you're playing for a top team. And then the lower table team just quits when the match is like 3 or 4 0. And then you get two more goals here and there. It happens quite a bit. For example, Pepe and Tillman played very well against Heracles this match that I'm talking about today. But it's tough to judge because Heracles kind of just gave up on the match early in the second half. Look, I'm not trying to kill the hype or even overhype any of these players. I'm trying to be honest as possible and add as much context as I can to any of the U.S. men's national team players and their performances abroad. And you can judge it yourself. I'm just giving you my opinion of what I said and understand that a player can be talented and also stat pad. Both can be true. That's what I'm trying to say. Next up is Taylor Booth from Utrecht also in the Redivisie. And on Sunday, Taylor Booth started and played 61 minutes for Utrecht during their 1-1 draw with 20. So he was ineffective once again, didn't really play well. He has been like that ever since he came back from injury and Utrecht continues to struggle as they are currently in the relegation zone. Last but not least, in the Redivisie, I was going to talk about Jordi Mihailovic, but he stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes once again for AZ Alkmaar and he's expected to return to MLS this January. Now I want to go back to England, or more specifically to the United Kingdom. We're going to talk about the Americans in the EFL Championship, the second division of England. Then we'll go to Scotland. So why don't we start with Haji Wright from Coventry. So before I talk about Haji Wright, one thing is Josh Sargent is still injured. So there's nothing to update there. We're still waiting on an update of when he'll be back from that ankle injury. But Haji Wright on Saturday started and played the full 90 minutes for Coventry during their 3-2 loss to Preston. So for this match, the two goals that Coventry scored came from Haji Wright. He had a brace, two goals scored. And for Preston, another American scored. And that is Dwayne Holmes. Now from England, let's go to Scotland and talk about Cameron Carter-Vickers from Celtic. On Saturday, Carter Vickers started and played the full 90 minutes for Celtic during their 3-0 win over Ross County in Scotland. Enough of that. Now let's quickly go through the Americans that play in the Belgium League. And the first one is Gaga Slonina. And on Friday, Gabriel Slonina started and played the full 90 minutes for Upen during their 1-1 draw with STVV in Belgium. Slonina made four saves. And fellas, listen, I would love to have time to watch the Belgium League as well, but I do not have time for that. So I've been mainly following Slonina through highlights and stats. I'll say this, based on that, he's done okay and is gaining some valuable experience. But it does not appear that he's anywhere near the level needed to be an English Premier League goalkeeper, which is fine because he's still just 19. But moving on from Slonina, still in Belgium, we have Mark McKenzie from Genk and Sam Vines from Antwerp because they faced each other over the weekend. And on Saturday, Mark McKenzie started and played the full 90 minutes for Genk during their 3-2 loss to Antwerp. Sam Vines was actually not available for Antwerp because he's currently injured. Last but not least in Belgium, we have Brian Reynolds from Westerlo and on Saturday, Brian Reynolds started and played the full 90 minutes for Westerlo during their 2-0 win over Leuven. Now we're going to go back to Italy super quick because I said I would cover these players from time to time. And they are the Americans that play in the second division of Italy. So why don't we start with Tanner Tessman and General Cabuccio from Venezia. On Sunday, Venezia got a 1-0 victory with Busio scoring the goal. Tessman also continues to be crucial, and they are currently in second place fighting for promotion. The other American is Christopher Lund, the left back that plays for Palermo. And on Saturday, Lund started for Palermo and played roughly 79 minutes during their 1-0 loss to Sampdoria. Palermo is currently in fifth place in the second division, but they have one game in hand. And if they win that game, they'll jump to third place. Ideally, as Americans, we want Palermo and Venezia to get promoted to the Serie A. We're not done yet. We have two more Americans to cover that don't play in Europe, but also play abroad. The first one is Johnny Cardoso from Internacional in Brazil. And on Sunday, Johnny started and played 87 minutes for Internacional during their 2-1 win over Cruzeiro. Johnny got an assist in this match, and it's the second consecutive match that he gets an assist for Internacional while mainly playing a defensive role. For this assist, he had a nice interception, progressed the ball forward, then found Vanderson, which did all the work after that and scored. And you know what? For this camp coming up, we won't have Tyler Adams. Luca De La Torre seems to be injured. Johnny is actually in good form. And this November camp might be a fantastic opportunity for him to consolidate his place in the U.S. men's national team roster. But moving on from Johnny, which he probably will go to Real Betis this January. That transfer will be confirmed very soon. 
we're gonna go talk about Alejandro Zendejas from Club America. On Saturday, Zendejas started and went the full 90 minutes for Club America during their 3-0 win over Tijuana in Liga MX. Zendejas scored once again for Club America in this match, and he's actually been in great form in the Mexican League. With Wea out, he will likely make it to the US men's national team roster that is set to be released this week. Greg Berhalter clearly likes him. He was called in last camp to replace Malik Tillman, and it's also been rumored that Real Betis, the same team that's signing Johnny, is interested in signing Zendejas, but no offers have been made at the time of this recording. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to go follow us on Instagram. Help us hit 10,000 followers this week, or I lose the bet. Drop a like in this video before you go. Don't forget, we'll be doing the US Men's National Team roster release live stream sometime this week. And we have also a special video coming out this week as well, which I won't reveal what it is. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Yes.